it's like day 83 of isolation. So tired of this. Running out of math to talk about. Can only do so much probability. No, that's not true. We've got some stuff to do today. Now, we're going to continue what we're talking about, probability. Now, it is day like 83 of I don't know how long we've been here. Uh, but we're going to keep on talking about probability because there's always more to do. Uh, what we've got today is we're going to start branching out. Rather than thinking probability of single independent events, uh, use the wrong word in there, rather than looking at single events, we're going to look at what we call compound probability. How do we think about combining multiple possible outcomes? And so we're going to see this. We're going to do this with a few different experiments. Now, starting off, I'm going to go over to my notes. Let's see, let's see what happens when we roll a six-sided die. Nope, 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 nope. What's the probability of rolling a one? Well, when we uh, go into it, we've got our six-sided die. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six different sides on a six-sided die. Makes sense. One of those is a one. So the probability of rolling a one, we know is one out of six. Probability of rolling a two, same die. Well, one of those sides is a two. Hard to see with a clear die. I gotta up my game here. Well, we've got one side is a two. So the probability of rolling a two is also one out of six. Now we're gonna change this up. What about the probability we roll either a one or a two? Now, thinking about this, it's going to be 2 out of 6. Not too bad. We look at our die. We want a 1 or a 2. Well, there's 1, 1. There's 1, 2. So there's two different sides that are successful out of 6 total possible sides. So, one side is a 1, one side is a 2. The 2 out of those 6 are successful as mentioned. Now, thinking about this, we could take that probability of 1 or 2, either one being successful, add the individual probabilities. We get 1 6 plus 1 6 is our 2 6. We are combining two different possible outcomes. We add those individual probabilities. Let's take a different look. Let's go to a deck of cards now. Probability of drawing a jack, we know it's four jacks out of 52 total cards. Easy. Probability of drawing a spade is 13 out of 52. There's 13 spades, 52 total cards. Now let's take this idea. What about if we draw a card that is either a spade or a jack? Thinking about before, probability of jack or spade we would take those individuals and get 17 over 52 when we add those two together. Out of this 52 cards in the deck, 17 of them are either jacks or spades. So let's go through with it. I've got my deck of cards here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. I've got a full deck of cards. I'm finally playing with a full deck of cards. Let's draw a jack or a spade out of the deck. Pull this down. I'll shuffle it up so we can nice and see it. Probability we draw a jack from the deck. Oops, completely messed up that. I had it all set up and everything. Well, okay. Anyways, there should be four out of 52 because there's four jacks. There are 13 spades. Let's just pull those out, count them out. Okay, spade, 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 there, there. And I take away everything that's not a spade, everything that's not a jack. I gotta really up my magic game. I hate magic. There's a jack. Which is why I was trying to fudge the cards a little bit earlier. There's a jack. There's a jack. This is all in the same pile because I all want them together. I want the 17 cards there. And there's a spade. Don't you like these cards? Aren't these cards fantastic? I got them in a little roadside shop in Delanzagrad, 
uh, something like that, in Mongolia, Southern Mongolia. They're all Mongolian wrestlers doing their thing. It's kind of creepy, but kind of awesome at the same time. Alright, there's a spake. Alright. Just go through once again. No spades, no jacks. And spade. So you can say something if you see something. No spades, no jacks. All right, so we had our 52 total cards. We're looking for our 17 spades and jacks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh-oh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh-oh. We've got 16 cards here. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, we've got our thirteen spades. That's right. All right, there's one, two, three, four jacks. Okay, so we've got our thirteen spades and our four jacks. Okay, once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen spades. We've got our four jacks, but 13 and 4 should get a 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh no, what's happening? Let's go back to the math. Hopefully you stuck through me, stuck with me all along through here. We've got probability of a jack or spade. Well, from the dice example, it should give us 17 out of 52. But, let's go back to a Venn diagram to look at what's happening. Quick switch of the hands. We can say that a Venn diagram, uh, we've got our overlapping circles to show us the different possibilities. We have four total jacks in our deck. We have 13 total spades in our deck. But there is one card that is both a jack and a spade. We actually end up counting that in both sets. So what we had earlier adding those individuals does not work because there's one card that we are counting together in both of those. We can only count that once since it's already included in the spades, it's already included in the jacks. So what we have to do is we actually need to subtract that overlap once. Because it's being counted twice in there, we subtract it once so we only count it one time. There are 16 different cards in there. Now, in general, whenever we see this word or in probability, that means addition. And what we've been doing here, if we have the probability of one event or a different event, to find this, we're going to take the individual, individual probabilities, add them, and subtract the probability of the overlap. That's what was happening with that jack of spades. Anytime we see the word or, that tells us addition. Add individual probabilities, subtract the overlap. Let's take a look at an example. So here, we've got 43% of the world's population have type O blood, 85% of the po world's population are what we call RH positive, and 37% have both type O blood and are RH positive. What is the probability that an individual meets or satisfies one of these categories? Now that tells us you could be type O or RH positive. Putting it into probability speak, it's going to be O or this RH positive. We need the individuals. So we're going to add and subtract the overlap. Now we know that we've got the probability of O is 43% or 43 out of 100. Probability of RH positive is 85 over 100, 85%. And both, the total, uh, the overlap is 37%. Following through with our formula, we add the individuals, we subtract the overlap, we get 91% satisfies both, or excuse me, one or the other. Now notice, if we did not have that subtraction, that O plus the RH positive would be more than 100%, that obviously does not make sense. So thinking about a situation like this, the subtraction makes sense. 
Now, one more example. A card is drawn from the deck of cards to determine the probability of a jack or a king. So we're going to take the probability we draw a jack, add the probability we draw a king, subtract the probability a card is both a jack and a king at the same time. Well, jack is there's 4 out of 52, king there's 4 out of 52. How many cards are both jack and king at the same time? Well, that can't work. In this case, this is an example where jack and king are what we call mutually exclusive. A card cannot be both a jack and a king at the same time. Different from being able to be both a jack and a spade at the same time. Those are not mutually exclusive. So in this case, that adds to zero. The individual ones, we're going to add, we've subtracted zero. We get our outcome, just like the dice back at the beginning. Big idea what we need out of this? Whenever we see or in probability, that means addition. So a lot of probability is going to be about interpreting statements and how do we uh, translate it into mathematical speak. So A or B, we add the individual probabilities, subtract the overlap. Sometimes the overlap is zero, but we do need to pay attention to that. So practice for you up on Google Classroom. Try it out. Let me know if we've got any questions. Good luck.